So from this problem, design for the diameter of the rivets to be used in the bracket show. If the rivet has an allowable shear stress of 93 megapascals, so that is a specification of the shear strength of the rivet rivets used. Okay, this bracket here is an exemplary load of 50 kN supplied at this point at a distance of 300 mm from the set point. So as you can see, it is uh, connected using uh, five pieces of rivets as shown. As you can see, they are equally spaced and they are based symmetrically as well. So by inspection, where will be the, the, where, where will be the location of the set point? At the center of our rivet number three. Uh, eccentricity is defined as the distance of the point of application of the load from the set point of the group of rivets. Uh, so that's the definition of eccentricity. Okay. So from this problem, it's actually a design problem. The previous problem that we had is an investigation or analysis problem. This time, we're asked to design for the diameter. So what would be the minimum diameter of the rivets? Required here to resist the given load of 50 kilonewtons. Okay, so, the, the, so are you convinced that this problem is under uh, eccentric shear? Yes, because the load is applied away from the centroid of the group of defense of the eccentric shear. So, for eccentric shear, remember that we need to analyze this and solve for the shear forces on each of the bolts due to the red load. Then another way is solve for the shear forces on the rivets due to uh, movement. So this is what uh, I did. First is I simply place the concentrated load or the applied load directly at the center point of the of both here. So with 50 kilonewtons here, what would be the shear forces on each of the rivets? And that would be simply the load would be 50 kilonewtons divided by there are all five pieces of rivets. So each of the rivets would have 10 kN shear force, and the direction of this would be upward. And what about due to moment? The load applied here is here, the center is here. So obviously, the direction of the moment would be counterclockwise. The magnitude of the moment would be 50 kN times the distance of 300. And that is 50,000 kilonewton meter direction is counter clockwise. I solved for the solution of x squared plus y squared. For both number one, what is its x? What is its x? Horizontal distance, half of 1 by t is 60 squared. What about its y? Vertical distance is 80, 80 squared. The x squared and the y squared for rivet 1 is the same with rivet 2, 4, and 5. So they are all 4 pieces. What about for rivet number 3? What is its x and y? The center of this rivet coincides with the centroid of the group of rivets. That's why its x and y are both equal to 0. Now, we are designing for the, we are asked to design for the diameter. So with that, we need to identify and solve for the maximum shear uh, force. But to do that, we need to identify first which is the most stress given. Among this five, which is the most stress? Based from the guidelines that we had, first is which one is the nearest from the line of action? Which one, which rivet is nearest from the line of action of the loop? So it's 1 and 4. Okay, so it's 1 and 4. Second criteria or guideline would be uh, the farthest from the centroid. If this is the centroid, the farthest rivets are 1, 2, 4, and 5. Actually, they are all of equal distances from the centroid. 1, 2, 4, and 5. So we just have to check which one is common. Obviously, it's common. The common are 1, both uh, rivets 1 and rivet. So we will have an idea that the most stress rivet would come from those two rivets. So what I did is I consider rivet number one. 
Okay, for defect number one, um, for the x component, and now e over the summation of x squared plus y squared. And since this is x1, we need to multiply with the perpendicular distance y1. And y1 is the vertical distance of 1 to the center, which is dt. How about for the y component? y component, so I need to multiply it with the x distance, horizontal distance, which is 60. So I have, I have uh, 22 by 5 kilonewtons. Where did I get these uh, directions? Okay. If my uh, moment direction is counterclockwise, the resisting moment should be clockwise. For the case of event uh, number one, so you draw a straight line from the centroid, then you draw a perpendicular line. Where will be the arrangement of this uh, shear force? It will be upward to the right. No? So that's why it's upward to the right. So that's how we identify the direction. It is uh, important for us to determine the directions because in getting the resultant of the shear forces, directions will give you the 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 the, uh, the sign. I mean the sign of the forces would it be to be added or to be subtracted from one another. Okay, so summing up. I mean, uh, getting the resultant for the shear forces, considering event number one, due to the right load, we have a 10 kN upward, then due to the moment, we have a 30 kN to the right, and a 22.5 upward. So, getting the resultant of these three forces to give us 44.5 kN. If this is the maximum shear force for the entire connection, we just equate the actual shear stress of that driven to the allowable. The allowable is given and 3 megapascals. The R maximum is solved with 44.23 converted to newtons divided by the area of the limit, pi over 4 diameter squared. So, solving this equation, it will give you the minimum diameter of the limit with the required, and that is 24.61. We just have to round this up to the next commercially available diameter of ribbon. Let's say we have 25 millimeter diameter ribbon available. Therefore, our final design answer will be adopting five pieces of 25 millimeter diameter ribbon with an allowable shear strength of 90 millimeter passports. Okay, so that's how we design this collection. Question. Almost the same time the process, but this time the other one is not known. Kanina, the first problem is that it whereas just for the shear force. As we know, what is the actual shear stress? 